Hey everyone, this is Dr. Israel with Integrative Kidney Institute, and today I'm going to be talking to you about the fourth principle of our integrative approach to kidney health. I hope everyone is enjoying this nice spring that we're having. The birds are chirping, it's beautiful outside, and I am off today, so that's wonderful. That makes it even better. So, uh, Today, you know, we think about a lot, we talk about the gut and its relationship with the kidneys. And, uh, you know, we wrote a lot of blogs about this. So uh, I hope you get a chance to visit our website, www.inkidney.com slash blog, because you will see a lot of our uh, blogs that we wrote about the gut and kidney connection. And there's so much details that it's hard to just talk about them in uh, one video. And this video, as we're talking about, is video about the principle related to the gut kidney health and gut kidney connection. When we talk about the kidney, uh, and, and uh, when we talk about the gut, you know, we talk about this microbiome. So the gut is actually, if you think about the size of the gut, it's the size of two tennis courts. And it contains uh, trillions of bacteria and other organisms. And it has more cells in, those, in this microbiome than our own human cells. There is more genome in those, um, in those uh, bacteria and microbi microbiota than in our human genome. And of course, they're not sitting there doing nothing. They're interacting with food and they produce substances that help us thrive or can make us sick. So uh, when we think about the gut-kidney connection or the gut-kidney access, we think about the presence uh, and the balance of the gut and uh, in the, the balance of the micro microbiota in the gut and gut health and integrity. So if there is this biotic uh, microbiota in, in the gut, that will lead to inflammation in, uh, in, and can cause immune response that can trigger kidney disease, unfortunately, or it can cause accumulation of gut-derived uh, uremic toxins that can also lead to inflammation and worsening of kidney disease and accumulation of uh, toxins. So the gut-kidney access talks about the relationship between the gut health and microbial diversity of the gut and kidney health or disease. So there is this term dysbiosis that you're gonna hear me talking about over and over and over. It's, it described the imbalance in the microbiome where there is more bad bacteria than good bacteria. Uh, this, is, uh, this, this will lead to increased intestinal permeability. It's called sometimes leaky gut or sometimes they describe it as the um, intestinal hyperpermeability. And, and, and gut health can be suboptimal. It can lead to chronic inflammation and chronic diseases, even if you have no GI symptoms. So some people may, may be feeling good, they're not bloating or having a diarrhea or constipation or anything, but still having unhealthy gut leading to systemic inflammation. And our food that we eat interacts with uh, those, the, the microbiota and can affect the microbial diversity. So some microbes uh, thrive on protein-rich diet and some, uh, some other microbes actually thrive on fiber. So the good bacteria end up producing short-chain fatty acid that feeds our the lining of the gut and keep the gut healthy. So you eat food that is good, you feed good bacteria and that good bacteria feed the gut and keep it healthy. So if you eat bad food, you're, you know, uh, you're, you're getting bad bacteria and that's causing the, the gut to be not healthy. Um, and there's other factors that are also associated with or affects microbial diversity and can uh, be associated with dysbiosis. This include genetics, uh, lifestyle, and you know, even stress, for example, has been associated with, um, with microbial uh, diversity and, and dysbiosis. If you were born a, a C-section instead of natural birth, 
You can also be uh, at risk for dysbiosis. Bottle-fed children, as com uh, compared to normal lactation, are at risk for dysbiosis. And if you got a lot of antibiotic exposure as a child, also that can lead to risk of dysbiosis. And there are a lot of medication that can lead to dysbiosis. PPIs, for example, those proton pump inhibitors that they use for um, gastric reflux and so on, they can lead to dysbiosis. So when we think about the relationship between the gut and the kidneys, we think about two major interactions. One is as we saw in that previous uh, slide, is those gut-derived uremic toxins. And the other one is the autoimmune kidney diseases. So again, if you have this biosis in the gut, you're producing all these um, substances coming from the bad bacteria, and that decreased the formation of the short-chain short chain fatty acids, which make the gut not healthy, the lining of the gut not healthy, leads to inflammation, and, can, and that can trigger uh, endothelial dysfunction, fibrosis, and, and damage to the kidneys, and also can lead to elevated blood pressure. So, um, and you see, I'm, I'm putting references here in all these slides because this is not me talking, it's all documented. And um, this is another slide to show you how the dysbiosis can lead to increased intestinal permeability and, and leaky gut and that can lead to inflammation, autoimmunity, and even malabsorption and nutritional deficiencies and can affect the brain too. So what's unique about kidney disease is that there is something that described as the dysbiosis cycle. So in kidney disease, we start with, or we can start with dysbiosis and that can lead to decreased short chain fatty acid production, which affect the lining of the gut cause leaky gut, and that can uh, lead to the formation of more uremic uh, and waste product and inflammation. And that can worsen kidney disease, but then kidney disease by itself can lead to, four, to more dysbiosis. And then you end up with this cycle where kidney disease lead to dysbiosis and dysbiosis lead to more kidney disease and the, the patient get worse with time. So, um, the other aspect, as we talked about, is inflammation leading to autoimmune disease. Autoimmune diseases, actually, because, um, you know, there's a lot of kidney disease that can start from the gut. And, and nobody's like really paying a lot of attention to this right now. But we, we're learning more and more about these because the, the, the lining of the gut has a built-in immune system. We talked about how the gut is the largest immune organ in the whole body. The system is, uh, you know, is described as GALT or gut-associated lymphoid tissue and is actually in constant interaction with the microbiome. So if you have abnormal bacteria in the gut, uh, the gut lining and, and, and the wall of the gut can detect what type of bacteria there are in there and that lead to multiple complex immune complex um, cascade that can lead to either formation of inflammation or even autoimmune diseases. There's a lot of data uh, we're learning about. There's these toll-like receptors where the body can, like again, the gut can detect what type of bacteria is in there and lead to a cascade of uh, immune response and this has been implicated in the formation of uh, lupus nephritis, in the formation of vasculitis, and, and many others. <clears throat> so when we think about gut health, the, 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 the bottom line, gut health is important for kidney health. And when we think about gut health, we think about all the function of the gut. The gut um, health include gut motility, absorption of food, and the integrity of the lining of the gut and microbial diversity and balance within the gut. So it's not enough when we try to heal the gut to just throw in a probiotic or um, kind of target one thing. You have to really do it in a comprehensive fashion. This is why we talk about the 5R protocol when, when you remove 
bad actors. You add, replace things that the gut needs and uh, repair the gut and re-inoculate when needed with, you know, with probiotic if needed. And also you guide the patient to rebalance their life so that they can maintain gut, gut health down the road. So I hope you like this video. If you like it, please uh, follow us on Facebook. Uh, we are there at Integrative Kidney Institute. We're also on Twitter, in kidney, and uh, at Integrative Kidney on Instagram, our channel in uh, English, Integrative Kidney Solutions. Please share the video, like it. We would love to hear your comments. And we're always on www.inkidney.com.